how to reduce your bloat in as little as seven days. So, are you someone who is constantly bloated? You eat foods, your stomach seems super full. Um, you may even be someone who just feels like there's always a balloon in your belly all day. So, it may even be hard for you to kind of determine which foods are good, which foods are bad, which foods are bad because every single thing you eat typically bothers you and there's really no rhyme or reason, so it's just kind of hard for you to tell. So, I completely get it. I've been there before. I struggled with gut health issues my entire life. <laughs> I finally got to a point um, after 20 something years where my gut health has never been better, but it took me a long time. And I was also doing a lot of things that I just didn't know was not good for my gut. So to heal your gut, it takes time, it takes patience, it also takes a lot of trial and error, um, depending on how bad your gut health is, which is why some people stay stuck forever because they don't realize that it's not just a overnight fix. Um, so, you know, sometimes you can de-bloat just by changing simple habits. There are some cases where your gut may be a little bit super inflamed, where you need a little bit more extra TLC to get it completely healed, but you can always get it healed. If you feel like there's no hope, I can promise you, you can always heal your gut. Um, Cause I felt that way once before. I was like, I am never gonna get better. My stomach's always gonna be like this because that's what I was used to. That was my normal. Um, doctors told me like, you're gonna have to just live with the gut, um, with the, you know, IBS and you have to live with bl bloating and there's no, you know, there's no reason why you're always not feeling good or it might be in your head. Like it was just constant. So when you're being told that all the time, you feel like, oh, whatever, I have to live with this. But I can promise you, you can always, always heal your gut health. You just have to know what to do and you have to be patient and you have to put the time in. So I really just wanna give you seven steps to reduce your bloat in as little as seven days. And this is not a quick fix, not a permanent solution if you think you can just do this for seven days and then go haywire after. But these are definitely habits that will um, and can uh, make a difference once you continue to add them into your lifestyle. Everything I preach is about lifestyle, so no quick fix here. So if you're someone maybe carrying extra bloat from, say, the holidays, or you feel bloated time to time, and you're not really sure what to do because you've been stuck for so long, here's what you can do for seven days, and you will see a difference. I apologize, my leg keeps sitting this, and my phone keeps shaking. So the number one thing to do for seven days is eat a whole foods diet. What does a whole foods diet consist of? So this means nothing with packaged or processed foods. So this may involve a little bit more cooking, but you can prep your meals in as little as one hour for an entire week. So you want to stick to lean proteins, low glycemic fruits like berries and cherries and raspberries. You can even add some apples in there. Um, a wide variety of vegetables. Um, I will say that for seven days, like the first seven days, you really do want to stick to a lot more um, leafy greens. Uh, and you want to maybe stay away from the cruciferous vegetables just for this week only just to see how you feel because, um, you know, you have cruciferous vegetables, which are the broccoli, the cabbage, the Brussels, the, the cauliflower. At times, they can cause some bloat and more gas if your stomach is already inflamed. It's not something that you have to stay away from long term, but for healing, yes. So you want to stick to more of like the spinach, the collard greens, cucumbers, my favorite, string beans, zucchini, artichoke hearts are amazing. You want to get the frozen ones, not the ones that are drenched in the can. Um, and you can also have some healthy whole grains, some red or sweet potatoes. So when it comes to a whole foods diet, it's the always, it's, it's always, always, always the best place to start. You are naturally giving your body that chance to have a detox from all the added sugars and unnecessary ingredients found in packaged goods. So there's huge benefits to sticking to a whole foods diet. Um, a good rule of thumb for sticking to a, you could call it a clean diet, but a whole foods diet is really 90-10. 90% of the time you eat whole foods, 10% of the time you have some things that are off target. So this simple change can literally flip your entire life upside down. I'm not exaggerating because depending on, you know, where you're at, if you just focus on having, depending on how many meals you have per day, 
um, typically you'll have about two to three choices for the week that are being off target and the rest are whole foods. And this simple change can really make a huge difference with your health, many, many people's health. So it's definitely something worth trying uh, because now you're giving your body to actually heal with food, not junk. And the second one might sound like a really hard one, but this is the second tip. And I can promise you that it is easy and I don't want to downplay it, but you don't know what you don't know. So what I'm about to say may shock some of you. And you're like, oh, I'm not going to do this, but I am going to make it really simple for you. So you want to remove gluten from your diet for seven days and you want to limit dairy or get rid of dairy completely as well for seven days. So you may be thinking like, whoa, I'm not getting rid of gluten. If I get rid of gluten, there's going to be nothing to eat. What am I going to eat? I'm going to be eating cardboard. I've been gluten free for six years now. I still eat my pizza, my bagels, my pastas, my ice creams. So one, there's many alternatives to gluten free stuff. Um, and two, a lot of people think that some foods are filled with gluten when in fact they're not. So it's just a miseducation thing. We just need to get educated on what it actually is. So not all carbs are gluten, even though people relate that to it. So gluten is actually a form of proteins found in wheat, barley, and rye. So this means all wheat flours, white flours, they all have gluten. But for those, um, typically the things, white flours, wheat flours, are the things that are typically wreaking havoc on our gut and our body for the most part. So you may be thinking to yourself right now, well, I don't have a gluten sensitivity, so why would I give up gluten? So whether you have a sensitivity to gluten or not, the reason why I'm telling you to remove it for seven days is because gluten actually causes inflammation. Obviously, when we're, cons when we're experiencing a lot of bloat day to day, um, when you remove uh, gluten, you can actually make a huge impact on how you feel day to day. So if you're someone who eats, say, a big meal and it's loaded with gluten immediately after, you may feel super tired and very sluggish. It's not because you ate a lot. It's because you ate a lot of something that's making you feel that way. So a big misconception on gluten is you know, people think they can't eat rice or potatoes. And many people think that rice and potatoes are filled with gluten when in fact they're actually naturally gluten-free foods, whole foods. So that's why a lot of items uh, being made with brown rice flours and potato flours, they're actually acceptable, which is why you can still eat just about anything while being on a gluten-free diet. I will tell you from when I was gluten-free till now, like gluten-free is easy. In the beginning, it was hard because there was nothing. Now they have everything. Um, and I'm not really here to convince you um, and tell you to change your lifestyle and go gluten-free. Um, although I do know that it was one of the best things I've ever done. And again, I apply the 90-10 rule again to this as well because it's so unrealistic to think that you're going to be perfect 100% of the time. And when you heal your gut, the 90-10 rule allows you to eat things without having the negative side effects of the food. And along with uh, gluten, you want to just reduce... Um, how much you're eating of it once you heal your gut. And people will look at me sometimes and be like, oh, I thought you were gluten-free, why are you eating that? Well, I don't eat it 90% of the time, I eat it 10% of the time and it doesn't affect me. And the same thing you wanna do with dairy. Uh, obviously, if you're lactose, that's a little bit of a different story, but I will tell you that dairy, for an example, um, I if I touched cheese, if I touched anything with dairy in it, like I was miserable. And this this went on for a long time, um, and it wasn't until recently, probably the last year, believe it or not, where I can actually introduce cheese um, and my stomach is good because I really, really, really got my gut health to a really good place. Whenever you have any sort of sensitivities, you can, in fact, heal your gut. So you actually do just want to make sure that you limit your dairy intake. There's tons of milk alternatives, so I'm not really going to tell you um, sorry, my messages are going off. I'm not really going to tell you to go find cheese alternatives because I'd be a liar because I don't eat cheese alternatives. They don't taste good. I don't want them. Uh, but there are certain cheeses that are easier on the gut. Um, also dependent person to, for person, but goat cheeses, um, are made from goat and not cow. So those are easy, typically easier to digest. So goat cheese, feta cheese, uh, mozzarella is one of 
something that I eat often. It's actually from buffalo as well, most of them, and a lot easier to digest, and they don't give me breakouts and things like that. So if you can't say goodbye to all your cheese all at once, at least make sure you're eating cheese, like not a cheese substitute. For example, craft cheese slices are not actually cheese. That might blow some of your minds, but if you're going to be having some cheese in your diet, at least make sure it's from real food first because the fake stuff is really gonna wreak havoc on your body. And then tip, <clears throat> sorry, tip number three is to replace your coffee with green tea. If you're a caffeine drinker, this can make a huge difference with how you feel day to day. It might even make you feel like you're going nuts and you're like, no, absolutely, I'm not doing it. But caffeine is a gut disruptor. It also heightens anxiety, which also causes a lot of sleep issues as well. Even if you have coffee in the morning, and you're like, oh, you know, it's not keeping me awake. It still does and could affect you at night. So all I'm really saying is limit it as much as you can. And if you could just make the switch from coffee to green tea, you can. Um, not all coffee is bad. That's not what I'm saying. But if you are someone who experiences poor gut health, you're bloated all the time, you have irregular bowels, um, you have anxiety, poor sleep, you have skin issues, then caffeine is something that you definitely want to do less of. And switching over to green tea is definitely a good start. You can have as much as you want. And then tip number four is something that you can literally do anywhere and it's breathing, we're breathing right now. Uh, but breathing the, the right way for a few seconds at a time throughout your day does a lot for our body and our mind. So when our gut health is imbalanced, our gut microbiome is typically inflamed and also under a lot of stress. And believe it or not, 96% of our serotonin is made in the gut. So breathing can actually make a big difference because it helps control our stress re our stress response. I feel like I can't talk today. Now, if you all know me by now, some of you do, some of you don't, but I'm sure you know and you may be able to just get the vibe. I'm not someone who sounds like I meditate. I'm not telling you to go meditate because I don't meditate, but I am telling you to take five seconds in your morning your afternoon and your evening to breathe, five seconds. So it's a total of 15 seconds per day. We could do it, I promise. Uh, if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, and you can do this in the bed, in the shower, in the car. Um, this will really help you with sleeping as well. Um, so something as simple as just breathing correctly is really important. And it's also missed at times, believe it or not, because when we breathe, when we're breathing in, we want to make sure we're filling out our stomach. We're filling up our stomach like a balloon. And when we breathe out, we are then deflating our belly. So most people actually do it the other way around. So be conscious about this when you are trying it. And all you need is 15 seconds to complete this task. Again, it can be done in the morning. Well, the morning, the afternoon, and at night. And tip number five, last but not least, and one of my favorites is water. I cannot stress enough the importance of water. I talk about it probably every single day because it's something that people miss all the time, 90% of the time when I'm talking to someone who is struggling with energy, a slower metabolism, lots of bloat, just any sort of issues, chronic headaches, anything, you name it. The first thing I always ask them is, how much water did you drink today? and they're never drinking even half the amount of water that they should be doing. So one thing that I want you to do this week with your water, um, one, have more of it, aim for 100 ounces, but I also want you to have water first thing in the morning and I want you to add some lemon and a splash of cayenne pepper to it. This is not used to magically help you lose weight because sometimes you'll hear people tell you, oh, do water with lemon and cayenne, you'll lose weight. This is actually used to purge toxins that have been built up in your body while you were sleeping. So this actually gives your metabolism a kickstart for the day and it also helps your circulatory system. So warm water with some lemon and cayenne first thing in the morning. And I know that I shared quite a bit of information, but I do wanna just recap the five things you can do this week to reduce your bloat and just be conscious of these habits. If you have questions on them, please let me know. But one, you wanna make sure you're eating a whole foods, diet, say no to processed and packaged goods. You want to remove gluten and limit dairy or get rid of dairy completely as well. Replace your coffee with green tea. 
and incorporate 15 seconds of breathing to your day, morning, afternoon, and at night. It's only 15 seconds, five seconds at a time. Five breaths in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. We could all find time for that. And the last one is to drink your water and be sure to have the warm water in the morning with your lemon and the cayenne. And that's it. But I do have a bonus for you. And I do want to add this just because if I don't, I feel like I am keeping a secret and doing a disservice to anyone who struggles with bloat on a daily basis or really for anyone who is looking to just jumpstart their health, they feel like their metabolism is super slow or they just want to start being healthy. They don't know where to start. So this is my number one product that is life-changing. When it comes to bloating and just overall feeling good, I take them every single morning. I used to wake up nauseous every single day. It was like routine. I used to bloat regularly. I was always uncomfortable and I relied on caffeine to the max. And let me tell you, if I had to pick one product to keep with me for the rest of my life, just one, if I was stranded on an island, I could only bring one. This would be it because it literally makes me feel good all the time, no matter what, when I take it, it just always helps me feel better. If I, even if I'm feeling a little bit down, I'm like, oh, let me just, let me just grab this and I feel good. You can't say that about many products. Most of the time, and you may even be thinking this right now, you're taking supplements and vitamins and you're like, wow, I don't even feel a difference, but I take them anyway. Or I take them because my doctor tells me to and they're supposed to be good for me. So we're taking things sometimes that don't even work, but Opti Greens 50. So my greens powder that I take every single morning are not like any greens on the market. There's nothing like it, but they are the best. You will see and feel a difference. And that's why I say it. They reduce bloat in minutes. They give you a boost of natural energy. They help fire up your metabolism. And they even help with nausea and headaches. It's literally one of the only things that I could take and be like, wow, I feel different. All the time. Never fails. So this is actually what I use to replace my lemon water because it is a good day to start your morning for your metabolism um, also for gut health and all that. So if you are someone looking to invest in your health, you're constantly feeling bloated or you bloat after you eat or you simply just want to make the jump and you want to start making healthier choices, then you can't go wrong with OptiGreens. I can assure you if you go check out the reviews for yourself, you'll see what all the fuss is about. Um, every single person that takes the greens always messages me like, wow, I can't go even a month I can't even go a week without the greens. So I attached the link below. If you do order and you use the link below, you will get free shipping. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be hopping on here because it's a mindset day. Um, I'm always on here talking about health and fitness, but our mind is part of our health. Our mindset is literally everything. Um, and I do really like talking about it because we can always make it better. Um, my mindset years ago was completely different than where it was now. Sometimes still to this day when I think back, I'm like, wow, I really wish I had my mindset that I have now several years ago because I feel like I just would have done or made different decisions or done things differently back then um, or just done better in certain things. But everything happens for a reason. And our mind is something that we have to personally work on day in and day out, just like our health. So tomorrow I'm going to be talking about how we can talk ourselves into things rather than talking ourselves out of things. So I hope this is helpful. Don't forget to check the link below if you're looking to reduce bloat, boost your metabolism, and just get natural energy and feel good. And I hope you have a fantastic Friday, and I'll see you tomorrow.